Greetings, traveler. I know it may be tempting not to heed warnings telling you to turn back now, but this one you might want to pay attention to if you're sensitive towards sexual content or foul language in a podcast. We will be swearing during this episode, and we will be talking about some not-so-PG-13 things. So this is your one and only chance to turn back now. Please enjoy the show. I, I, I honest to God, just forgot the last, like, 30 seconds of what we just said. Did you really? Yes. Whoa. Disappeared out of my mind. Gone. Working memory, <clears throat> be like. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. Because we're talking about time travel this episode. Oh, no. Indeed. Yeah. And we have never talked about time travel on this show, ever. I don't think I'm going to talk about time travel this episode. You (gasps) have to talk about time travel this episode. What if I told you that the words you're saying right now that are coming out of your mouth hole are traveling through time as we speak? Really? Think about it. The words are reaching people in the future right now. Indeed. Something about glucose dependency. Intolerance. Wait. I feel like those two are very different things. Did we create an alternate timeline without bread? Is that what we're saying? The glucose paradox. The glucose paradox. (laughs) I've done it. Nobel Prize, please. (laughs) Money! (laughs) Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Nat One Podcast, a.k.a. Nope, because nope, you're not going to want to hear what we're about to have to say. I'm Pertusa. I'm Levi. And I'm Jordan. This is, our, um, this is our time travel episode. Indeed. <laughs> Thank you for that rousing interpretation of our theme song. Oh, no, I was just yawning. <laughs> oh, I thought you were trying no. to imitate the... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we're back at it. This, um, I'm immediately going to peel back the curtain a little bit for, for the audience. This has been in our like planned document as just another sci-fi episode for a bit. And if you guys watched our sci-fi episode, you know that I'm bad at sci-fi. So I was... It's his fault. <laughs> I was well, being like, please, <laughs> any an alternative, please. <laughs> Point at him and be angry if you wanted more sci-fi. I don't know any sci-fi things. You're welcome. I, you, have, you have narrowly avoided having to hear me talk about Firefly once again. It will happen. This is a threat. I now okay, uh, real world, not real world, update fake world. Um, I no longer have school, so I will have hopefully much more time to watch the shows that Jordan makes me watch. Watch Firefly, like that, <laughs> and that other one, the one about like the warehouse or something. Warehouse 13, watch <laughs> Warehouse 13. It's all the sci fi you need. <laughs> and who knows, maybe I'll even watch that show that's not natural. Don't watch Supernatural. <laughs> no. There is there is time travel in both Supernatural and Warehouse. He 13. said he was going to watch the show that's not natural. Jordan Supernatural is supernatural. Yeah, you're so, right. I'm sorry that I was incorrect. But I'm there is time travel in Warehouse 13. <laughs> Whoa, wait. No, I think Levi's onto something here. <laughs> what? Does that mean like paranormal is just like really normal? It's par no parallel is parallel, so it's parallel to normal. <gasps> It's so like it's that not one. Normal. What's that vampire in what you did in the shadows or how, whatever that show is? What what we do, what in, we the do shadows, in the shadows? Which which vampire? They're all vampires. The one that sucks fun or whatever. Oh, Colin Robinson, the energy yeah. vampire. Yeah, I love Colin it's Robinson. Paranormal, supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Robinson is supernatural. He's so normal. It's annoying. Yes. <laughs> anyway, actual time travel now. Indeed. Um. Uh, to open this up, I suppose, let's just go in order of time travel. What your first experience with time travel was, Levi, what was the first time you ever heard of, like, not normal time travel? What do you mean not? I feel like time travel in general is pretty not normal. <laughs> I don't know why, but in my head, I've assumed that just, like, time progressing naturally is, in fact, time travel. I mean, it is. it could be considered a form of time travel. <laughs> it's just time. Going, what? doing his thing. Is she free? No, I don't think so. She's sort of bound by the laws of the universe. Dang. Like a lawyer chick or something. She Hulk? Anyways. <laughs> I'm probably back to the future. That's the one that like everyone, everyone knows about back to the future, even if you haven't watched it. 
So, I mean, all the people like in my parents' age had seen the movie and like, you know, they reference it from time to time. And so even if I had never watched it as a kid, like I, that was probably my introduction because I was like, oh, it, the movie's called Back to the Future. It's a movie about traveling through time to the future. That's the movie. That's the name of the movie. That would probably have been my first introduction to the concept of time travel. Yeah. What did you think about it when you like first heard about it or saw it? Were you like, whoa, or were you like, what? It didn't really confuse me. And I also wasn't very excited by it either, which will probably be a running theme for me this episode. <laughs> okay. Give me the best impersonation of a sound you made when you saw time travel. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, what about you, George? <laughs> what was your first time travel? My first time travel exposure was also probably Back to the Future because uh, wow. I watched that at a very young. It's such a good movie. All three of them are such good movies. I love Back to the Future. I love time travel. If you can't tell, I'm very excited and I have lots of opinions. I have written papers on. See, this is the theme. I'm the movie person. So if I've written more than one paper on a subject in film, it's like my favorite thing ever. And I've written multiple papers on time travel in movies. So uh, Back to the Future is probably my first closely followed by Bill and Ted because I can't remember the separation of like how far apart I watched those movies because we watched a lot of my brother and I watched a lot of 80s movies as kids. So like, I don't, I don't know which one of those, I know Back to the Future came first, but it was very closely followed by Bill and Ted, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you like time travel. Mm -hmm. What was the first time you saw time travel? Did you get it all the, all the way? Um, I mean, with Back to the Future, it kind of lays it all out That's and true. it gets a little bit more mind fucky in the second one because the first one it's kind of it's pretty cut and dry of like yeah he goes back to the past and he interferes with things so now he's disappearing and he has to get back to his present which is the future and it's but then in the in the second one you have to deal with the alternate timelines and the different realities that are caused by different timelines and then that's when you get start getting into like the different kinds of time travel that are present in media because you have all of the different interpretations of what happens when we mess with time. Mm -hmm. Some of those get real messy real fast. I have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, if someone will, if someone will ask me, ask someone, ask me, ask me. Tuesday, what I'm was your first on. exposure oh. with time travel? <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I honestly, this is a weird one. I bet you, definitely, neither of you are going to have ever heard about this. And I bet almost none of the audience will have ever heard about this either. Um, the My first experience with time travel was an old PS2 game called Time Splitters 2. I have never heard of that. No. Not familiar? Yeah, no, I <laughs> no. don't think so. <laughs> it was a really weird one. I got to look up. It had a little subtitle. I forget the name. Purchase it as the only one with unique experiences. Yay. Yay. What? what? No. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you guys know I lived super well we all did but i especially probably lived in a super rural area you're the most rural out of all yeah. of us <laughs> i didn't have internet until like 2012 uh <laughs> uh definitely didn't have netflix didn't have a lot of tv shows what i watched was what was on tv um so but i did have a ps2 my parents got me that and i had an uncle that had a bunch of ps2 games he's a bit uncle? of a gamer yeah <laughs> And he would let me play some of his games. And one time he let me play this one that was a shooter game. It was called Time Splitters 2. And then I just stole it and I played it uh, forever because I loved it. It was a simple FPS game that had like a campaign. But because it was based on like traveling through time, it was kind of like Loki-esque in that like you play as an agent that's supposed to go back in time and fix problems that happen. Oh, cool. Yeah, I liked it. But you're also, it's supposed to be like a 007 type thing, like Goldeneye. So you're supposed to be going back in time and then shooting the problems away. You're not doing this automatically. Uh, so, so you're five. You're yeah, you're... <laughs> very much so. Yeah. The agent's name was either Cortez or Cortex. I don't know mm. why it's one of those two. I mean, they're similar, but they also are very unsimilar uh, or dissimilar. <laughs> but one of those two is a cool. He looked kind of like um, Agent 47 from Hitman. He wore a little bit more body armor, though, because he wasn't actually being secretive. I mean, it was cool. You just went around, you just shot things. And there was, like, a whole going back in time scenes. There were some future scenes. 
And then there was this whole scene that I distinctly remember in like the second or third mission in that game where he's like, you're traveling in this place and you're in a, you get to a locked door, but you need to get through the door, but it's like a heavy steel door and he can't get through it. And then suddenly from a grate above him, a key drops, he picks up the key and he unlocks the door and you keep playing through the mission and you're like, oh, that was weird. And then you just keep going, keep going, keep going. And then as you're getting ready to conclude the mission, you have a grate on the floor and you take it and you see yourself down there. And that's where the door was that you needed to unlock. So the future you drops the key down for the past you to pick up and unlock the key or unlock the door with that cool. key. And that was, I spent like probably 20 minutes on that dialogue scene, just trying to understand how it happened and what, what just happened. Fix time loop. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, what? Like I couldn't understand it. My little like eight year old brain was, I almost had a stroke. That's but where you start getting the paradoxes is with the closed time loop stuff. That that I think yeah. that's the most mind fucky out of all of it. Exactly. So that was my first experience with time travel. It's crazy stuff. But... Jordan, how do you feel about the end game time travel? I have lots of words about the end game time travel. I personally hate the time heist. And this is an unpopular opinion. <laughs> I don't like the way that they did time travel. I have come around to it a little bit more since Loki, and we've gotten a little bit more information about how the branching timelines work and the multiverse stuff works. But when it originally came out in the movie, because I have such an interest in time travel and how it's per presented in media and how there is a little bit of consistency as mm -hmm. to how it's presented in media, I watched that and I was like, that's not how time travel works. <laughs> So I, I have I have a resident little bit expert of issue. <laughs> on time travel. What are your credentials? Uh, my source is that uh, movies made it the f up. <laughs> movies made it up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you not like it? Explain. Explain your reasoning. It's when there's... will you like it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like the I, the thing that I don't like is the fact that they could go back and fix the branch timelines. Because mm -hmm. I think it works. It, make, it makes complete sense that you're removing something from one of the timeline and it creates a different reality. Butterfly effect, all that kind of stuff. Branching choices. But I don't like that they have the ability to take it back because I think that takes away all of the stakes of what they were doing because you going into it and knowing that risk of like, all right, we can't fuck this up because we've already ruined time and so if this goes wrong we ruin time for nothing and so yeah. the, the fact that they could just go back and like oh here's your crystal back we, <laughs> we did the thing and we don't need it anymore they kind of takes away all of the stakes and all of the meaning from the sacrifice that comes from messing with time yeah <laughs> that's that's my problem <laughs> yeah i didn't really have an opinion on it one way or the other when it happened my my first thought was like man i wonder how other people are going to feel about this <laughs> Because I was like, this isn't something that I care about too much, but I feel like it's something that like movie people are going to be like, this is either really cool or really bad <laughs> when I was walking out of the movie theater. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just, especially after you were like, I have opinions. I was, that was immediately <laughs> what my brain jumped to. Because that's like the most, is that the most recent like... Um, display of time travel and popular i mean other than loki other but than i feel loki. like they go hand in hand yeah the that's same the same universe, same yeah. media area same mm -hmm. universe mm -hmm. i'm sure there's others that have been like perhaps more recent but if we're talking about recent and biggest definitely those. yeah well, i mean doctor who's still going on but yeah. i feel like doctor who kind of classifies itself as its own mm -hmm. thing doctor who's <laughs> been going on since like the 80s hasn't it the 60s dude the 60s wow. Day. Wow. it's old that was my it's second the longest guess. running television show to be it, it hasn't run consecutively like it ran yeah. for a period in the 20th century and then it picked back up with the ninth doctor in the 21st century and it's been yeah. going since then but don't yeah. mind me i'm just writing down things that we need to talk about before i forget them all oh i'm minding <laughs> no this is the time travel episode you can't mind yet i uh, just uh, rewind no. it's fine oh okay what about uh, doctor who it's Does anyone in here time. watch Doctor Who? Jordan, have you watched Doctor Who? I have. I haven't recently, but I did used to watch Doctor Who quite a bit. I didn't. I watched like two episodes and I was like, this isn't for me, but that's okay. <laughs> I haven't watched it, but I've done that thing where I've watched a bunch of clips of it on YouTube. So I have very extremely vague context of certain things. <laughs> you have enough happen. osmosis knowledge to kind yeah. of know what's going on. 
I just know about those big things that like sort of broke the mainstream. Like most people now know about the Daleks, whether or not you watch the show or not. Most mm-hmm. people know about the TARDIS. Most people know about the doctors and like the general concept of how they work. Mm-hmm. Most people also, the big one, this is what got me to watch even a few episodes was the Weeping Angels. Yeah, um, yeah. Because that's a cool thing. Yeah, there are a couple things from Doctor Who that have wound up being a pretty popular media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's just some of those like subculture things, kind of like Danganronpa or the When They Cry series, where you got one person that loves it, <laughs> and so they get all their friends to hear a little bit about it, and you might Man. suck one of them into the rabbit hole. But <laughs> I wonder who he's talking about. Uh, probably <laughs> Taryn, that weirdo. Uh, <laughs> speaking of wormholes, actually not at all speaking about wormholes, but um, before we move too far from it, I did want to talk about the pruning in Loki. Mm-hmm. So spoilers for those of you that didn't watch Loki, Levi, you're gonna I don't to... care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so quick explanation of pruning, and then I want your thoughts on it right away, Levi. The way yeah. it worked in Loki, you probably know more or less like somewhat what happened in that in Loki. I did the same thing with Loki that I did with yeah. Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> so they got this whole the TVA, time variance authority. They go throughout time. Anytime something goes wrong in a timeline, something that's not supposed to happen the way the MCU has it happen. They go in and they prune the mistake. They hit it with a pruning stick and then it goes away. It looks like they get like dematerialized Mm -hmm. and like just completely atomized. However, we learn it towards the end of the show, spoiler moment, spoiler moment, that they're not getting killed. They're being sent to the end of time where there's a giant uh, like cloud dog that eats people at the end of time. And it's basically a survival free for all. Yeah. You either get eaten by the giant cloud dog or you like just Mad Max style <laughs> run around. Over there. Yeah. So what do you think about the pruning? Why is there a giant cloud dog? It's It makes more sense in context. <laughs> I swear I like heard about the reason for it in uh, in the comics and I've forgotten because it's been a while. Because mm. I'm in my head, you saying giant cloud dog, the imagery is like a very happy golden retriever <laughs> head. No, think of it more like a like a wolf skull in the shape of a giant okay. cloud. Yeah, that makes it a little bit more menacing because I was imagining a very very. <laughs> no, it's like a giant. Dog. It's a giant storm cloud with a mouth. Is the <laughs> yeah yeah okay. Well, hmm. I mean, what's my opinion on that? Yeah, I have opinions on the pruning, but I, I want to hear I, yours. I feel like it. <laughs> in the context of what they were trying to do it makes sense because you got to explain in a way why there haven't been multiple timelines already so there's got to be something that someone's doing to make sure that there aren't multiple timelines Mm -hmm. and this is their explanation for that which is you just get uh sent to brazil which in this (laughs) case is the end of time with the happy golden retriever head and the mad max style uh Fortnite battle royale <laughs> and alligator loki <laughs> and apparently alligator loki um <laughs> oh no it's crocodile loki isn't it it's i think it's crocodile yeah, I, alligator I yeah. <laughs> but yeah again whereas my thing is like typically with time travel stuff i don't have things where i'm like i don't like this type of time travel but i really like this type of time travel i don't like have a negative or positive opinion of it i just think it it makes sense for what they were trying to explain. Mm. Yeah, true. It made some sense. But I hate it. Okay. <laughs> now, I was with it entirely when they were getting atomized. When they revealed they were actually just being sent far into the future. That's where I was like, no. Ah, okay. Because, <laughs> like, they're going in to fix the problem, right? And then the and, and this is what got me is, again, spoilers. Um, They prune our actual protagonist, Loki, as well as, like, the other important loki in the series and then those two use some loki trickery to defeat the cloud dog and then unravel the timeline and make it a multiverse mm-hmm. and Which i'm sitting there might like coincide with wandavision but there's been some debate on what, that yeah. what you're <laughs> saying is if they would just kill these people this wouldn't be a problem yes Which i no. completely agree <laughs> they with. led that, to their that, own that, downfall that, yeah. that is true uh, now, there were some cool moments in Loki with the time travel, like where they trapped Loki in the time loop of him getting, what was it? like That a, was cool. Beat by that one Nordic woman. It, yeah, when it. Sif came and like yeah, punched Sif. him. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious, getting him stuck in a time loop of him just getting <laughs> beat. <laughs> I was like, that's amazing. Why can't they? I, that would be a better alternative to the pruning where you get sent into Mad Max land. 
You just die just... over and over again? Yeah. That's man, more where have effective. we seen that before? I don't know. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna get to that don't you worry <laughs> oh yeah i figured we'd get to that <laughs> one, yeah. that's what i think about well, jordan what do you think about the loki pruning or just the loki system in general i enjoyed loki i because i i really like loki i was a little iffy i was not a big fan of the loki self cessed thing yeah. <laughs> but not my were... favorite not my favorite relationship in the mcu but whatever <laughs> uh i did think sylvie was very cool though but um the the thing that i had about the pruning is that's where the stakes were for endgame <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like the 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 explanation and the timing was a little bit misplaced because that's where the consequences are for what they were doing in endgame and then they just never showed up in endgame so mm. i i I feel like it was a very good explanation again for why there were not already branching timelines and the multiverse and all that stuff. But the, I feel like it should have come earlier, which is a, a little bit of my complaint of, of several properties in the MCU that I think the placement of release kind of mm -hmm. doesn't do the things justice. So like, I like the system and I like the idea of somebody like having to go and clean up the timeline, but it kind of ended up seeming like a last minute explanation for the things in Endgame, even though it might have been in production far before Endgame. We have no idea. Yeah. I don't but, think that's a big issue the MCU just suffers from in general is it's become very bloated because there's mm -hmm. just so much content of all the different various characters and their it's stories so track. and then all the movies that have all the characters together in them or some mm. of the characters and not all the characters you're going to run into probably you're going to run into things where it's just like someone just didn't think mm -hmm. about it or they didn't know that they did this in the other movie <laughs> and now they do this thing that contradicts that they were in production at the it, same time and nobody communicated yeah, or makes yeah. it seem stupid now i feel like that's a big problem the ncu suffers from Mm -hmm. uh, especially just, now now that we're this yeah. far and they got so much stuff i feel like kevin feige is just like the dm of the largest campaign ever because <laughs> i feel like he's the only one that knows every detail that will ever happen in the mcu he's he knows a party that of none like of it actually people. contradicts itself <laughs> and it's all good <laughs> There's a plan. Um, I, I trust that there's a plan for the greater MCU, and I love Marvel stuff. I am yeah, behind too. on a lot of the properties, but I have thoroughly enjoyed the stuff that has come out. You but know I used to I, think that his last name was pronounced Fage. <laughs> I I thought so when I read that it the first sense. time. <laughs> but yeah, Marvel's pretty cool. Loki also is really cool. I just have gripes with Loki. exactly how they. Do I will time say. Travel. I think as a person who hasn't watched the show, that's why I had a much more like, yeah, no, that seems like it makes sense reaction. But I do think <laughs> as a person watching the show and then being like, yeah, here's this problem we have. And it could just, just like what Pertusa said, it could just be gone if we just got rid of these people forever. <laughs> but we're not going to do that. <laughs> it's the classic supervillain thing, right? Like it's like what Dr. Evil does, lock them in the chamber with sharks and lasers and then close the door so we can't see them. You're not perish. even going to watch? You're not even going to watch them die? No. No, Scott. <laughs> yeah, no, no Scott. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's the thing with Loki. Although I do I do absolutely love Loki and um, mm. and the TVA was really I, cool. for one, I love the as TVA. a fan of the self set. <laughs> Well, thankfully, you'll be happy to hear there's a season two coming. No. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what they're gonna do about that because that was like most people didn't like that. So, but anyway. it was where, like, I was all for a like friendly relationship between Loki's because I think there was a lot that they could learn from each other mm. and that they could like support each other through different things. It did not need to be a romantic relationship. <laughs> no, it does. It makes sense to me though because Loki is such a narcissist. He's Loki. <laughs> I feel like it's not going to stick. I feel like that's a thing where, like, he experiments oh, with it. Oh, that's they were like, right. Ooh. I I was, for a second, I was like, in Norse mythology, didn't Loki have kids with someone? And then I remembered who he had. He had kids, kids with everyone. That's what Well, <laughs> I, I remembered specifically the one that was, like, important, which was he had kids with, like, an eight-legged horse. Yeah. yeah. And he was not the person who gave the kids. He received the kids. Yeah, no, yeah. His, 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 uh, sleep mirror, I think is the Yeah. Name. Uh, that, yeah, he's sleep mirror's mother. So we just need to introduce that character. A true romance for the ages. <laughs> okay. So that's what I had to say about Loki. 
Yeah. Now, there's three others on here I have on my list. Does anyone else have something in particular they want to talk about? I don't have a list. I could talk mm. more about the different kinds of time travels, but I feel like that'll come up organically as we continue talking about properties. True. I'll give you an option of what we go through next. I got on here JoJo time. Yeah. Austin Powers <laughs> and Tracer. Oh gosh, Tracer from I have a, I also have a couple yes. to add to the list because there are a couple very important time travel properties that we can't not talk about. Okay. <laughs> Which one of those do you guys want to go for first? Austin Powers. I will go with Austin Powers, yeah. Great. I feel like they handled time travel the best of any movie ever bar none. Agreed. <laughs> I mean that's just that's just par for the course with Austin Powers because those movies are perfect. Sure. Yeah, what was the they're, fake? They're not bad in any way. <laughs> what was the name of the fake sequels that you you posted? Oh my chat? gosh, that was so funny. I don't know who made this meme, but immediately, went, what are we on now for Marvel? Are we on phase five, phase, phase yeah. six? Mm-hmm. Uh, we are finishing phase four in real time, and they just announced five and six. Mm-hmm. And someone made an edit of their like big screen phase six <laughs> announcement and it just has three austin powers movies i like that, that better say, than the morbius meme that's uh, that the austin say, powers, austin powers rebirth austin powers versus mr bean and the end of austin powers and i love the end of austin <laughs> powers the most because it's in the evangelion font and <laughs> has the same title in it underneath in japanese oh my that's god that's so good the end of austin powers i love it Goku. copyright and the uh, caption says cinema is saved again yeah baby <laughs> <laughs> true though i heard they are actually making another one they are actually i think so yeah it's like well it's they, like their twitter like hinted at it <sighs> i gotta check I love this it. out i gotta find out if they're making another austin powers movie this will be the most hyped movie i will ever be hyped <laughs> yeah no ever. i will be so excited i will see this movie's opening night in theaters <laughs> Now, for reference for those of you who haven't watched Austin Powers, or if you're skipping through this part because you personally don't like Austin Powers, um, <laughs> the time travel introduced in Austin Powers is so much as they explain it. He rides, he drives a car, goes back in time, and as, as uh, Basil Exposition is trying to explain how it works, Austin Powers gets confused and goes cross-eyed. <laughs> oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. So then Basil just says, it's best not to think about it too much and just have fun. Which is the yep. best explanation for time travel in a movie, honestly. <laughs> Definitely a looking at the audience kind of moment there. And I love it. And I was like, they you were. know what? They were I... looking right at the camera when they said that line. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> I'm cross-eyed. Wait. <laughs> Um, but I was just like, you know what? Absolutely true. If every movie said this, I'd be okay with it. If they just told me to just not care and have fun, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Works for me. <laughs> Instead of giving me like a half hour of explanation of how it works or why it works, just be like, uh, don't care. <laughs> or even have a character be like, yeah, the scientist told me that uh, it's too above my head. Not <laughs> it's to worry above about. my pay grade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously, that's not going to work for every movie, but I still love it the best. It's best for, like, a comedy, for sure. Yeah, it works for the movie. And (laughs) arguably, Austin Powers has one of the best time machines on screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) The Mojo Machine. Yes. I don't think that's what it's called, but that's what I thought of when I (laughs) in my head. I mean, it makes sense. He's going to get his mojo back, so. Yeah. I still can't believe Dr. Evil did that. Yes. Also, doing... apparently what it is, is Mike Myers recently has been like, I would love to make a fourth Austin Powers ah, movie. I please. will do it if they give me the capabilities, pretty mm-hmm. much, is what he's been saying. I love it. I'll do it. Will yeah. he work on a zero dollar budget? Crowdfunding? <laughs> we can, ever, all the 10 people that are going to watch this video, listen, we got to go pay Mike Myers. Please. I mean, with him alone, we already have, what, like five characters? Yeah. Yeah, nice. well, yeah, he adds a new one per movie. So oh, it works like can seven. Be the other four <laughs> in the movie. Yeah. Her I choosing call... gets to be the sexy love interest. No, yeah. I want to be Mr. Bigglesworth. <laughs> oh, you can be Mr. Same. Bigglesworth. <laughs> <laughs> and this time Humanize I Mr. Get Bigglesworth. To be... Wait. Oh, uh, what's his name? Oh god, we just said it. Scott? Yes, I get to be Scott. <laughs> Scott! No, now Scott. Now that Scott is the bad Doctor Evil, I'm his son. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm Scott too. A huge me, tall me. <laughs> 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 oh, there would be no mini me in the new one. That's heartbreaking. Oh, you're right. No, that would just be Mike Myers again. 
No. It wouldn't be the same. It would not They'd be the do same. do what they did in the Lord of the Rings and do like no. weird camera perspective to make him look small. What if we just get Taryn to be mini me? It's a perfect fit. Uh. See? <laughs> Oh, oh. yeah! I don't remember Powell. that actor's name. I honestly, I don't. I, I mean, I want to uh, talk about it. Is that Vern Troyer? I think. I think so. I feel like that is. I can't remember. But yeah, I'll look it up. I wanted to talk about Austin Powers, but there's really not much to talk about. I yes, just want an excuse Troyer. to bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will always talk about Austin Powers. Well, I think the <laughs> idea of, um, I mean, just explaining that it probably does i will say it probably does have yes the best explanation for time travel ever which is don't care didn't ask <laughs> we're just doing it anyways suck it up buttercup like that yeah don't worry about it we're doing it there's something to be said about it until if time travel ever becomes a real real thing there's no reason to oh, guess God. he has disappeared died he, he went back in time and got himself <laughs> <laughs> it's the grandfather <laughs> paradox don't worry i'm here i swear <laughs> you're gray i am i don't know how to there we go i'm oh, back. he's back my computer just uh it it freaked out i think it didn't like you, glucose you disappeared and jordan and i both went wide eyed. <laughs> <laughs> we were so shocked <laughs> I don't know if uh, where I picked or where I was left off at by by my computer having a glucose intolerance <laughs> attack, but um, we're gone literally for like five seconds. Yeah. Okay. What I was saying was, is until time travel is real, until we know truly how it works, there's no reason to put much stock in what screenwriters suppose is potentially how it works. There's no reason to treat it with super duper severity. In some yeah. films, in some, like it's going to be important and they got to try and have at least a consistent system. But, like, that's also, what, yeah, <laughs> like Interstellar, like uh, Jojo. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, any other thoughts about Austin Powers before we move on to one of my other two on the list? I love Austin Powers. That's it. That's the thought. <laughs> I just think he's shagadelic. Yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> So now we get to talk about Jojo or Tracer. I know and about neither of these, so y'all take the to floor. talk about Tracer. I'm already Tracer. Uh, I forgot about that. You just time traveled to like 2018. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> these are mostly just frames for us to talk about different types of time travel. Mm. But um, Oh, okay. Yeah, I can get that. Yeah. So, so basically, Jordan, for yeah. someone who doesn't know Overwatch, Tracer mm -hmm. is his character in Overwatch who has like a mini time traveling device strapped to her chest mm -hmm. and her power, her ability is that she can like zip around really fast because she pretty much time travels back to where she was like five seconds prior. Okay. And that's her thing. That's her whole gimmick is that she's really fast and can like very, very short term time travel. I'm trying yeah. to think of a comparison. It would almost be as like what five does, but what his, his does mm -hmm. seem more like spatial teleportation. Yeah, yeah. But it, hers is instead framed as a temporal one. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's the same effect. It's just moving somewhere very quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, that probably would be like five because they go back and forth between calling it spatial and temporal jumps. Mm -hmm. Which um, also Echo from League of Legends is another example. Or from Arcane, depending on where you saw him from. But he didn't <laughs> have this power in Arcane, so spoilers. Uh, <laughs> he also does it he has a he invents his own time machine he's like one of the first people to do it but he's like a kid like he's like 16 and he invents time travel but it's like a little buggy all mm -hmm. it can do is send him back six seconds but it also reverts to wherever he was so if he got like cut in half then pulls the cord he's back together oh well that's cool that's nifty yeah it just has a cooldown. down so i can't use it back like over and over and over again mm -hmm. but uh, that's the kind of thing I want to talk about. It's like that short, short form time travel. How do you feel about that? I think, it's I an think concept. it <laughs> works and it works for stories that are like what we're talking about, which is like characters that are going to be engaged in combat very regularly. Yeah, that's a good ability for them to have. Outside of that, I don't really see how you could get much narrative use out of it, though. <laughs> True. Um and then also in some systems, obviously, this wouldn't work, like, at all, except for it would, but it really wouldn't. Like, in D&D, &D, go back <laughs> one round. 
<laughs> I, well, I mean, imagine. I okay. I will. I don't argue, have I'll to the imagine, Jordan. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> I feel like it could work if used appropriately. The only difficulty I can imagine is if you're in a big combat. If we have like, like you know, we got uh, what we have now six players at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, six um, players, and then add in four monsters, and someone it's their turn. They cast a spell or use a class feature to go back around. You either have to say, okay, you've gone back around uh, and nothing has changed, or you've gone back around every action that has taken place in the last like nine turns is wiped. (laughs) Everyone get your spell slots back, get the damage healed or unhealed if there was a healing spell cast it would take a long time to fix one yeah, that's, round <laughs> that's my qualm with it which we almost did in <laughs> one of the campaigns i dm so that's why in ttrpg type stuff in terms of actual combat use uh-uh it's banned at my table you're not allowed to use time travel in combat for anything ever it's Terran's <laughs> fault <laughs> okay, but Taryn was a genius. <laughs> he, I will give that to him. Yes, it was very big brain and it also was inspired. Literally, the what he he was the thing that defeated the BBEG pretty much. If he had not gone down that path of doing that, but at the same time, I hated it. I, not I didn't hate the narrative aspect of it. I just hated the. Oh God, is Taryn going to use this in a combat situation <laughs> today <laughs> and me having to worry about that constantly? I feel oh, like. Oh, he I'm just doing... gave you anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> if you use it, something like that, if there was a class feature or a spell that rewound a turn, sure, easy. That's not a problem. Mm-hmm. Get rid of a turn that just happened. Like, not the caster's turn, but the turn before. It gets like when you target a creature, it undoes its last turn. See, that's, that's what I'm easy. talking about. That I feel like could be very interesting because that could also mean the difference between life and death. Yeah. Because if somebody gets like just completely taken out and wiped out in one turn, or mm-hmm. like they're on their last legs and they get hit and they're down, if you rewind that, they're back up. <laughs> yeah a turn undone sure a round undone no yeah. which is funny because oddly enough this is supposed to both equal six seconds but <laughs> yeah yeah that's how that's what that would be in in D D, at least or in most i would say turn-based thing it's it's difficult it's really effective in real-time stuff like overwatch and league of legends is it time saving the best for last jojo time yeah jojo time jojo time this is where if we anything we haven't covered yet, pretty much should be covered now. Um, so those of you that don't know at home, <clears throat> which we haven't really talked much about it since like the anime episode, which is like twenty some episodes ago now. In the beginning, George Joe start now. Yeah, ing ming ing ing, your yo Uh, <laughs> we talked about anime. One of my favorite anime of all time, probably my favorite, is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Anyone that hasn't seen it. It's about a guy named Jojo going on a bizarre adventure. Oh. <laughs> you don't say. The first two parts have a clear-ish system of powers called Hamon, which has to do with controlling one's blood flow into holy energy, kind of Castlevania-esque. Castlevania meets Dragon Ball, but in modern times. Well, 1800s and 1900s. Then, from then on, from part three until modern, oh, modern time, part three until the most recent part eight, they have introduced a whole new system called stands, where every single stand has a unique power. And ever since then, the main villain, the final villain of each one, has had a time-oriented power, save part seven and eight. Seven and eight were different for lore reasons that I won't spoil. At the time that we're recording this, parts three, parts one through six are out. Six is not finished. So I will spoiler when we get to six for the final villain. Everyone else, go ahead and watch JoJo. We'll be right here waiting for when you come back. We'll start with simple one, part three villain. Spoiler if you haven't seen part three, main villain is Dio. He has a stand called the world. The world's ability is to stop time for up to, I believe it's 12 seconds. It should be okay, God. Now, this is an interesting thing to think about. I've always, I thought about it a couple of times. He stops time, meaning that everything, as far as we know, in like a range stops including like airflow, gravity, 
everything stops. Like like how time tra- like time stop is usually shown. Um, and then within that, he is the only one who has the ability to move around in the sp- in the stopped time. And then he like beats people up really quickly because he's a vampire yeah. zombie stand user. Yeah, pretty much. One one question of logistics because I've also wondered this with time stop. Mm-hmm. I have to wonder how when people use time stop in movies and it's suspension of disbelief. I know why it doesn't mm-hmm. happen. How are they not? rapidly propelled in a direction because the rotation of the earth stops therefore their momentum doesn't stop the exactly. earth just stops abruptly and they should go flying that's what i keep thinking about <laughs> all stuff like that like if everything stops some things shouldn't like <laughs> well if everything supposedly stops then if we're putting this into like really 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 strange metaphysical not metaphysical physical terms then you could also suggest that the concept of momentum also stops. So there is no momentum. That's true. In tech, if gravity doesn't pull you, then I guess momentum wouldn't push you, would it? What, but does gravity stop in this instance or is yes. it just, okay, that's yeah. a little, the, but what about time stop in D&D? That gravity still should apply, should it not? Yeah, you so don't just it, start flying. Yeah. <laughs> You would just but, go. <laughs> but then it also depends on the semantics of the setting. Because what if the planet doesn't move around? in that setting? That's what true. If? In Olympus, because it's like Greek based and they thought they were, uh, what was it, like geocentric? There's no. That's um, how we find out that the Earth is round and it's orbiting in Olympus. <laughs> we use time stuff I... and everybody just hurls to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> we found the end of the universe. We hit it. Dunk. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm looking. I'm going to look at the dumb stuff. So. <laughs> but that's my that's my issue with time stoppage, time travel. Is my brain can't. I'm like oh, you. Is you should just like fly and get smashed into a wall like a fucking bug on a windshield. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about what Levi said though about like if if all forces stop, you know, if we get rid of Newton's laws, and I guess you're fine to move. Sure. <laughs> Unless that also means you just move and then deatomize because either our bonds aren't yeah. holding you together anymore. True, I didn't think about that. Oh, that's Where does question. science and fiction oh, meet? Oh my gosh, like... yeah. Like, I guess, I mean, Dio, he, with his stand with the world, he's able to like push himself. He can like propel himself. So if he's like in a space type thing, he can just push himself. He can make himself go a certain direction. He can create mm-hmm. his own momentum. Ah. Okay, this is how time stop is worded. You okay. briefly stop the flow of time for everyone but yourself. So, wait. So that means everyone experiences time as being still, but it isn't? That's what I interpret it as. That's King Crimson. You briefly stop the flow of time for everyone but yourself. So it's pretty much like everyone and everything just becomes paralyzed. Yeah. That's so King it's Crimson. kind of, it's like, it's like the, the stopwatch experiment from the beginning of Back to the Future where they give Aini the stopwatch and they put him through the car and send him, I can't, I think it's a whole, it's a minute into the future. And then the top, the stopwatches are no longer synchronized. Mm. Oh, we're going to get to that when we get to King Crimson. That was <laughs> a weird one. That one's going to be hard. But yeah, that's Dio's power. Uh, of course, in D&D, I believe when you use time stop, is it like when you attack or when you use an action, it breaks the time stop? Um, or is it you can only do like one and then it's unstopped? The spell ends if one of the actions you use during this period or any of the effects you create during this period affects a creature other than you or an object being worn or carried on a creature other than you. In addition, the spell ends if you move to a place more than 1,000 feet from the location where you cast it. Okay um see obviously in jojo to make the villain a threat when he uses time stop he can still move freely and hurt people yeah. there's a whole thing where he stops time and then he starts just beating someone in the stop time then time resumes and it's just like all those blows land at once <laughs> <laughs> bloody pulp on the ground <laughs> yeah but yeah that's time stop how threatening do you feel like that is on a scale of one to ten how it, it we can think about it in D terms imagine if time stop didn't have the restriction like how long does the time stop last uh, one d four plus one rounds. Okay, so let's oh, imagine you can do lasts, a lot of damage in that. Yeah, yeah, thirty rounds, and you can damage people. How threatening is that? Ooh, 
<laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that's scary. Well, that especially if you're going rounds. up against if you're going up against somebody that seconds. has like multi attack. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if you could like somehow bestow the time stop onto the fighter, mm-hmm. and they roll the a four, so or they the get five turns, and then they that's twenty astral attacks. Self. Yeah, that's terrifying. Oh, that'd be so good, astral self monk with that. It's it's just deal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's deal. Uh, let's jump to part four now. Unless there's anything else we want to talk about time stop. We're moving on to a different type of time travel now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Part four. Spoilers again. Main villain. His name's unimportant, but it's also revealed pretty early. Yoshika Gakira. One of my favorites of all time. Phone case moment. <laughs> um, also bed moment. But... <laughs> Chase moment. <laughs> he... His power... Well, he's, he's based off of, like, serial killers and it looks like David Bowie. Um, yeah, yeah. The inspiration that Iraqi had for him was uh, he looked at a David bunch Bowie? of criminal <laughs> reports, <laughs> and in particular was inspired by Ted Bundy. Mm. His whole thing is that he finds beautiful women with beautiful hands. He blows them up and atomizes their bodies. So that way, there's no trace of them. Mm-hmm. There's no anything from them to be found by no blood or nothing, and he keeps their hand, and he keeps it until it goes rotten, and then he finds Lovely. another one. Yeah, he's gross. But that's all he does. Whereas Dio's whole thing was like to take over the world, typical mm-hmm. supervillain. Yoshikage Kira was like, I just want to live the life. He just that has makes a hand fetish. Yes, exactly. He's just like, I want to be happy. This is what makes me happy. Why can't I be happy? <laughs> uh, and then the heroes of that story just stop him. It's a small scale adventure, but I love it because it feels more, oddly enough, it feels more realistic than stop the villain when it takes over the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though it's all about people with magical stand powers. But <laughs> it's like why people watch true crime. <laughs> yes yeah very much so uh the power he develops and this is very interesting because i feel like this isn't covered too much anytime someone has time travel abilities it's like they've had it for a long time usually mm-hmm. uh yoshika Gakira develops this and we see it all we see him find this power use it and then die in the span of like 12 hours oh my god rip. <laughs> yeah spoilers he dies the villain dies <laughs> i mean maybe not rip because he's a serial killer but like <laughs> true um, the power he ends up getting, which all the stand names from part four on are named after his songs and bands. His stand was Killer Queen, then it was Sheer Heart Attack, and then it was Bites the Dust. Love it. That's what this one was called, Bites the Dust. And this one, I love it. I love it, I love it, love it. It's like my favorite stand power and also perhaps one of the strongest, if not for the little goof that happens. He sets a trigger. And whenever that thing is triggered in the range of like whoever he set it upon um everything dies and gets reset back to square one whatever he designates as square one okay so this is like groundhog day time Mm, okay and in the in the scenario in this he has a son he took over like he adopted the personality or the identity he stole an identity and is now the father of a child he never knew this child but there's like this eight-year-old child and he like invades their home and is now pretending to be their father. Mm-hmm. And because of Stan shenanigans, he looks just like the father. Um, and But the kid is catching on to him. The kid is actually caught on because he acts different behaviorally. And so he curses this kid with his power, his uh, bites the dust. And now anytime he tries to tell someone or in any way someone learns from this kid that his father is the serial killer, Bites the dust, activates, kills everyone around the kid, resets time back to the morning that that he did this oh, power. Oh gosh! So this kid watches several times over as the heroes of the story blow up and die, trying to as he's trying to tell them this villain without being able to tell them. Oh my gosh! And it's not like so. It's not like a. It's not a daily thing like Groundhog Day. Mm-mm. It's so you can go like months and then get. That's like um. There's an episode of Supernatural, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's a very popular episode of Supernatural, where Mm -hmm. one of the main characters keeps dying every day, Mm -hmm. and that's what triggers the reset, and so they'll go, like, time and uh, do that. There's also also an episode of Rick and Morty with the reset button, and you see him live, like, an entire life and, like, fall (laughs) in love and stuff, and then he accidentally hits the button, and then it goes back to... Yep. (laughs) But yes, I feel like I've pretty much explained how it works. The way it ends up failing is in his hubris, 
Yoshikage Kira announces, like, he goes like, I, Yoshikage Kira, have won. And then the bad, like, the good guys, the heroes are like, hey, that's Yoshikage Kira. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, then Bites the Dust is, like, null and void. But he almost wins again mm-hmm. because he's almost dead and a nurse, an ambulance shows up because there's people dying on the street. And he gets to almost curses the nurse with Bites the Dust and sends him back to the morning again. Oh. But, and this is where it gets crazy, he, he's about to like reset time and then the hero from part three is back in part four and he has inherited the power to stop time but only for like three seconds mm-hmm. and he stops time and manages to beat Yoshikage Kira before he re- rewinds. Wonderful. So now that I've talked way too long about Yoshikage Kira <laughs> what do you guys think about like Groundhog Day isms like that? I think it's an interesting premise. You see it all the time in like TV shows. Like I was saying, you see it in Supernatural and you see it in um, Rick and Morty. It's an interesting premise and you kind of have to wonder the implications of doing that because you kind of see it in Groundhog Day of like he learns all of these skills and things and gets to know all of these people, but all of these people don't know him. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of see the psychological effects of like living the same day over and over and over again and getting all of these skills and learn knowing all these things about these people and then it just it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah yeah that's what i think is cool about uh what jojo did with it because they made it an antagonizing force rather than just like the circumstances that you are in or mm-hmm. in groundhog day it's like it's like man versus nature but in this it's literally man versus man there is a person causing the groundhog day you can stop him mm-hmm. you just got to figure out how yeah yeah figure out how that's what i think's cool about it yeah um, if he didn't be stupid he would have been undefeated like indefeatable he mm-hmm. would have survived forever <laughs> I, yeah. Yoshikage Kira, I have won wait a second <laughs> i can't believe that i'm pretty sure that's, that's, Yoshikage Yoshikage Kira. Kira. that's such a dumb death it was something stupid that did it to him i i'm not sure if that was exactly it but it was something where he revealed himself by being stupid but uh, yeah the hubris, the hubris of man, man the true villain truth <laughs> Something like that happens in part five, too, which we're about to get to. Also, though, that did remind me, it's also like uh, Natsuki Subaru. I don't know why that just now came to me, but it's also just like oh, zero, yeah. reset, reset, reset. I completely but that's a hero. forgot that that was like, that's kind of time. Well, not kind of, that is like time travel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's just. Unless, well, no, I mean, technically it's not. If you do believe in the thing that happens in a later season where it's revealed, it might not be time travel. True. But in that he has the same thing with groundhog day where he gets he gets like checkpoints it's almost like a video game he dies he goes through dies gets back to the checkpoint so now he's like okay now i know what i'm going to face if i do that same route yeah Mm -hmm. so i can prepare for what i'm going to face so which is still fun it's very fun in that show too because it's in a fantasy setting yeah it's a very good show highly recommend it to anyone who wants to watch it Okay, any more thoughts about Groundhog Day before we go on to part five? And then part six, I'll make it quick because I think we have <laughs> ten more minutes. Yeah. And we still need no. to talk about Bill and Ted. <laughs> yes. Okay, part five, King Crimson. For every JoJo fan that is watching this and knows about King Crimson, I am sure you are laughing and rolling around laughing because I said I'll make this quick. <laughs> yeah, this is probably the most complicated thing ever. This is the most complicated like example of time travel in any sense known to man jordan i don't even know if there is a parallel to this i think this is unique (laughs) um okay the villain of part five which this takes place in italy his name is diavolo his power he has two he has one and this is based off of uh the band king crimson i think it's the band is king crimson and the album is king crimson and the song is king crimson or uh no it's in the court of the crimson king but point is Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all that. I think the band is King Crimson. Or am I stupid? Doesn't matter. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yes, his first power is simple enough. It's Epithet, which is another band is King Crimson. Okay, good. Um, it's a simple power. It lets him view the future that's about to happen in like the next 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. So he can see what's going to happen. Simple enough, right? He sees what's going to happen so he can like dodge left instead of dodge right or something like that. It's spider sense almost. Mm-hmm. Then the big one, King Crimson, the stand's actual power is the ability. It's, it's, it's so confusing because it's just, it seems like it's just a time stop, but it's not. 
because in time stop, right, and this is hard to explain. So when something is stopped in time and then someone moves in the time, it's like what we did in our session last night, right? Mm-hmm. It feels like a lot happens and no time happens in reality. Yeah. King Crimson is very similar to that, but instead he skips ahead 10 seconds or something. Mm. So what he does is he like doesn't freeze time, but he like alters everyone's perception of time. So he can move freely and interact with things freely within 10 seconds. Everyone else just skips forward 10 seconds. So like the time passes, the time still Mm -hmm. passes, but it's as if their memory or their mind just skipped. So like he'll be in front, like they'll be, someone's getting ready to punch him. And then the next thing they know, they'll look and he's not there. Mm-hmm. And 10 seconds have passed. Like they went forward, they moved yeah. forward. And that was perhaps the most terrifying way they showcased it is when they first meet him is the gangs hanging out, getting ready for a big mission. They're getting ready to like see the boss or like uh, run away from the boss. Mm-hmm. And then there's like a, a noticeable skip and you have to like you, the viewer, are like, oh, did I hit a skip button? Was there like a lag or something? And then the character's like, hey, wait, weren't you just standing on the dock? Why are you in the boat now? Mm -hmm. And they're like, whoa, time's getting wonky. And then how the character ends up using it or how the villain ends up using it is like, he's getting ready to be attacked by someone that's betraying him. He skips ahead and he has punched a hole in the guy's stomach in the Mm -hmm. abdomen and he didn't even know it happened. So it's kind of like time stop, but not quite. You're going to hate me? I have a comparison. You do. I do. There's an episode of Warehouse 13, and I cannot remember the exact artifact that was you. Like, I can't remember the name of the artifact, but there's an episode of Warehouse 13. There is an artifact that does something similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, because one of the uh, Warehouse 13 is kind of freak of the week ish, but there mm-hmm. is like an overarching plot structure. Um, one of the warehouse agents used to work, I think she was Secret Service. Um, used to work secret service and before Mm -hmm. she was transferred to the warehouse she and another agent were together and they were doing um so I'm not gonna like spoil because it's kind of important but they were Mm -hmm. on like a mission together and her partner ended up dying (gasps) because of a time discrepancy and so the entire thing that's like plagued her mind because she thought it was her fault is Mm -hmm. um she thinks she was late but he was early getting to the checkpoint where he was shot. And so Uh there's like this weird time discrepancy. And then they revisit where this kind of thing is happening again, where people are dying and there's time shenanigans and things like that. And they find the artifact is changing people's perceptions of time. Mm. And they find that out by like finding people's desynchronized watches. So whoever was in the radius of the artifact their watches and their timepieces don't match the people that were not within the radius of the artifact because time passed differently for them, but mm-hmm. still ended up at the same point. <laughs> it is wacky. It is hard to <laughs> think to to conjure that. It makes it's hard sense. to explain. That's I, I'm like I know yeah. what happens in the episode because I've watched it a thousand times, but trying to explain it is <laughs> yeah. It makes complete sense, but then it's like, but how does it make sense? <laughs> Levi, what do you think about King Crimson and Epithet and all that? Make brain hurt. Uh, <laughs> I've grown cross-eyed. Being a person <laughs> who hadn't watched the show and then getting that meme of like someone trying to explain to me how King Crimson worked. And also I didn't know that there were two stand, there were two parts to it of King Crimson and Epithet at first. And then eventually someone explained that to me and I was like, oh, okay, that makes a little bit more sense now. <laughs> that he does it because he can also see 10 seconds into the future so it's like ah he knows where he's gonna be too and it's uh, (laughs) (laughs) it's insane the solution for this the way the beat to the way to beat the villain in this by the way ends up being one the heroes gets super powered he gets enhanced mode and he gets a passive defense his stand becomes so strong that it defends him passively and it has the ability to um, reset everything to zero. So anything King Crimson does just gets undone. It's kind of like a rewind again. Yeah. But then the best part is that it uh, it does what we were talking about with Loki, where uh, the final stand that gets him, Gold Experience Requiem, it punches him to death. But then because of its super buffed up powered attack, 
it cursed him with the inability to ever die. So he's just always and forever living out different deaths infinitely. Most he's heinous still doing it right thing. now. Yes. It's and that's happening what, since when does part five happened? 2001? 2001, yeah. It's been happening since 2001. He's been gone for 21 years, dying <laughs> over and over again. Always and forever. And yeah. that's why people always joke about if you want to make something canon, just include Diavolo dying in it. And now no. it's canon. <laughs> yeah, that's part five. Final JoJo one I'm going to talk about, and then I'm done. And this is your part six spoiler warning now. If anyone hasn't read part six, or you haven't, like, I don't know, Googled what happens in part six. Okay. Spoiler warning's done. You're gone, or you're watching, or you're back. Okay, good. I'm still here. <clears throat> now we're dealing with something. Another one that I haven't seen too much, except for like kind of like the Flash. Time, <clears throat> excuse me, time acceleration. In JoJo Part Six, the final villain in that, Enrico Pucci, makes the final stand. Made in heaven. After so many different trials and stuff. And what that stand does is it doesn't let him speed up time. It lets him accelerate time. So everyone but him experiences time exceptionally quickly. So he is going through it like normal. Like day, days and nights go by in seconds. And then years go by in seconds. So everyone on the entire earth dies in seconds. Oh my because, God. Yeah, because super rapid aging, right? Mm -hmm. Except him. He's the only one that experienced a normal flow of time. As a result, he gets like super fast because he can walk way quicker because everyone else perceives him as walking way quicker when really he's just moving normally. I was going to sound. He said. I was going to say he sounds like a speedster. Kind of. Or like how how speedster powers are presented in television. Yes, and his whole goal was to reset the universe, and he does so successfully because he speeds up time so fast that the heat death of the universe happens and then a new big bang happens they tell us in the manga but i've already forgotten like seven times it happens but then the coolest part i think is one little child that has been a thorn in his side manages to, to like hang on through this this universe resetting several times mm -hmm. because of his own power or because of the power granted to him by his dying friends and then this is how, and again, I've already given the spoiler warning, but this is how the AU, the alternate universes of JoJo begins, part seven and eight, is because he reset the universe so many times. And now it is a universe that is similar to ours, but small changes have happened. So that's how you get characters that are recurring, but at the same time not because they're different than they were before. Mm -hmm. But you get to the same names and stuff like that, or similar names, like the protagonist of part one is Jonathan Joestar. In part seven, we meet Johnny Joestar, <laughs> who has the same family history and stuff, but things unfold differently. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Or funny Valentine. Or funny Valentine. Or funnier Valentine. We don't talk about funnier or Valentine. funniest Valentine. No, 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 we don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, perhaps the most menacing power or use of time travel I've ever seen is because mm -hmm. it was accelerated and it was the villain's power and he won. He succeeded. <laughs> he actually got it to work. He killed the protagonist. Mm -hmm. What do you think about time acceleration like that? Traveling super fast. I think that one so far has been my most mind fucky. <laughs> trying to wrap my brain around it. Because like I know what you're saying, but the like the heat death of multiple heat deaths of the universes. <laughs> it's a little much to <laughs> conceptualize. Yeah, it was hard to understand while I was reading it. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> I'll have to show you the animation of so, like a fan made animation of it when this is over. Uh, there's a really good one somebody made and it's kind of terrifying. Levi, I've we've talked about this. We've explained it before. He, um, <laughs> and if you look at the George Joe star, uh, everything else radiated down. Um, <laughs> what do you think of Enrico Pucci's Made in Heaven? I that style in general. About to say, now you got me thinking about that. I'm not going to be able to answer because I'm just thinking about everything else radiated down. Uh, 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 now that I have caught, wait, I, okay, I didn't know exactly what Gucci's power was this entire time. Why is that his ability in George Joe starting? Okay. He, what? he has multiple stands, like everyone oh, in okay. the past few. His first one, is, or his second one, is controlling gravity. Okay. 
Okay. In, in a in a fan made, uh, horrible horrible fan made. What do you even call that? It's not a fan fiction because it's a published work. Yeah, it's like a fan made story. Fan work. Yeah, fan it's a work, fan yeah. work of JoJo, which is technically canon because technically everything in JoJo is canon because of the multiple timelines thing. Love it. Rocky has um, confirmed it. He said everything's canon. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so there's this really badly written story that like connects every piece of JoJo history that existed before it into one big sprawling tale of a Joe star named George Joe star. And in it, Poochie becomes a good guy, but he gets like his stand gets super powered like the other main characters did. And because of that, it becomes the ultimate focal point of gravity in the universe and everything around it radiates down <laughs> but he radiates up this sounds like that the is your version of my immortal in writing <laughs> it is everything around him radiates down that is the actual writing he was the ultimate up <laughs> yeah that's just that's that's y'all's version of my immortal jojo's <laughs> immortal <laughs> Yeah, we sat down and tried to read it one time, but it, like, is actually really long. It's weird. <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, we tried to read both. We need to finish both. Both George Joestar and we My need to finish George my Joestar, world. we just skipped to the end because we wanted to yeah. see what happened. And I the end's amazing we as well. World. Because at the end, all of the protagonists show up in the same place and the villain just gets so fed up that, like, he can't win that he just gives up. Yeah, he just walks away. He's like, I just can't fathom how this is possible. I give up. I cannot <laughs> win. So he just walks away. <laughs> Maybe that's anyway. what we should put as one of our Patreon tiers. Like if we get so many people. George uh, Joestar? Nat one, no, Nat one, oh. by Immortal. <laughs> we become the ultimate up. No. And thanks to our George Joestar tier. That's what the uh. tier is. The ultimate <laughs> up, we read by Immortal. Bet, dude. But yes. Um, oh, Enough JoJo posting now. Now we can talk about Bill and Ted, and then we'll probably have to conclude. <laughs> but yes, I've never actually watched Bill and Ted, but I know about them. I watched you the haven't. Them. No, I haven't watched it, nor do I know about them. <gasps> there are got... three movies now. There were two movies. I can't remember. I don't remember if they came out. I feel like the first one came out like late, late eighties, early nineties, because it's Keanu Reeves is one of the main characters, and then the I can never remember him his name but the other guy is um was in lost boys mm -hmm. and I can't, I can't remember his name because i mean keanu reeves is in it so, oh i, I, was I can see keanu. him he's in my head like yeah the it's, the, it's the blonde one yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um but bill and ted is two burnout teenagers from california that end up in a magical phone booth that can travel through time and they're in a band and it's the greatest band to ever band in the entire world and they <laughs> save the universe and then they also make friends with death that's the second movie <laughs> is bill and ted's bogus journey and then the third movie uh that just recently came out is bill and ted face the music where their daughters who are also named bill and ted mm. save the world <laughs> with the greatest oh. song and the greatest band ever put together it's actually as as far as like a, a revival sequel goes it's actually not a bad movie it's really fun i do need to watch it because i heard it's really fun and also it's there's like fun. a lot of um well not a lot but there's like it's one of those things where like you'll see a reference to it like mm -hmm. an actual actual reference like someone directly referencing the movie not like the posters hanging up but like what they do like the air guitar thing like that's like yeah. a big popular it's, thing. it's similar to wayne's world where most excellent dude like yeah. it's <laughs> they've got some iconic stuff that is stuck mm -hmm. through so i need to watch them eventually. Strange things are the circle k yeah, yeah there, there's there are a lot of pop, pop culture references that are bill and ted that people don't realize are bill and ted be excellent to each other is is a big one mm -hmm. um the air guitar is, is one that they do a lot uh, yeah. But yeah, Bill and Ted is an example of what we would call a closed loop time travel theory because they don't necessarily create paradoxes. Time passes the same way that it does while they're time traveling in the main timeline, which mm -hmm. is where you get the conflict of the first movie because they have to make it back to their timeline for their big history presentation or um, 
Ted gets shipped off to um, Keanu Reeves' character is about to be shipped off to military school if they don't pass this final history presentation. And so Mm -hmm. to pass their history presentation, make it the most excellent history presentation in the world, they go back in time and gather people from history to come and talk at their school for their history presentation. Um, And if Bill and Ted don't pass this history thing and uh, they get sent to military school, then Wild Stallion will never become the greatest band in the universe, which is what the future society is founded on, is the music of Wild Stallion. (laughs) <laughs> this is a god dang episode of the backyard again it's so fun <laughs> well and then and then you have um the the time shenanigans you have the scene of napoleon in like a child's play place like a chuck e cheese they put napoleon <laughs> in, in a chuck e cheese uh joan of arc leads like a zumba class um what it billy the kid and socrates are besties and try to like wingman for each other it's 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 an excellent oh, movie. No, I, it's so good well and then and then you get this is where you get the closed loop time fuckery um they do things in the past that affect things in the present and but they haven't done those things yet because they have to remind themselves to go back and do them so to get like a set of keys that they need to get stuff so they can finish up their presentation they have to remember to go back in time after the presentation and set up all of the stuff for the stuff in the current scene to make sense and work mm-hmm. it's so anti Chekhov's gun <laughs> <laughs> okay all right final verdict Jordan do you have any more time information to provide Levi with before he makes his decision I'm trying to think. Well, you have the different interpretations of the multiple timeline theories, which mm-hmm. is you have like the end game interpretation of the multiple timelines and the way that it affects people. And then you have the like back to the future and Umbrella Academy interpretation, because both of them deal with alternate timelines. But in Back to the Future and Umbrella Academy, you have change diverges and then changes the current present. Mm -hmm. And so what happens in the past, whatever you change in the past, once you go back to the point in time where you left from, the universe has changed around the people. So they don't realize that it's changed, but you, that's not your universe. So it's still, it's still your timeline, but from the changes in the past, from the timeline, it, things get messed up. So the universe changes around it, which is what we see happen in Back to the Future 2 with the alternate 1985 and then mm-hmm. we also see that happen in Umbrella Academy with the alternate 2019 that they come back to where the Sparrow Academy is formed instead of the Umbrella Academy. Yes. Hot tub time machine rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't talk about hot tub time machine. That's okay. <laughs> we don't have time. We don't have time. All right. Well, maybe. We could Levi? have time. <laughs> we need to make it. How, this is how time is made. One fourth cup of butter. All right, Levi, you've been presented with all the information. Yeah. As the person who has, at the beginning, said you had the most, huh, reaction to time travel, you must now tell us, what is the most time travel of all time? (laughs) The most time travel of all time? The goat of time travel? Sure. Uh, This is the end of the episode. Make it a good one. uh, uh, Here we go, everybody. I gotta give it to them. They, They really... You know, I think it's the most entertaining way of doing it. Austin Powers. That's a fair assessment. It's just easier to just be like, don't worry, and just have fun. <laughs> there you go, everyone. Well, That's you didn't takeaway. like me explaining closed time loop time travel. <laughs> I dead. was literally sitting here like, <laughs> oh, I saw, I your saw face. you. You look distressed. <laughs> you I'll go. have to make you guys watch this at some point because it makes more sense when you're watching it. Because they, they kind of explain it and they joke around about it of like, wait, we, if we remember to do this now and we go back and do it later, then the key should be right there. Oh it's my God. Like what Patrusa <laughs> said at the beginning of the episode <laughs> with the, the game and the, we're setting up a closed time loop right now for us to talk about this at the beginning of the episode with the, the roll the credits. <laughs> Are you guys ready to start the episode? <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, we're talking about time travel today. I'm like not talking about freaking time travel. Square, but there's no angles. Poetry. Hi, this is Jordan.
Jordan from Nat One Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode you just listened to, and we hope that you come back for more soon. If you'd like to keep up with the zany shenanigans of our lives and the different things that we do, you can find us on Twitter, TikTok, Spotify, YouTube, CastBox, and Anchor. We look forward to seeing you again soon. And hey, thanks. Thanks.